Hello, dear. Tell the children to wash their hands, will you? and I thought I'd drop in to see how you were. Oh, I'm all right, I guess. Say, if you and Ruthie wanted to go to the movies, I'd be glad to stay and take care of the kids. Oh, thanks, Monty. You go ahead. I've got a little problem I've got to work out. Yeah. I, uh, figured you might after, well, after what happened today. Hello, oh, Monty. Hi, Ruthie. Come on, kids. Time for bed. Just a couple minutes, I'll be through. No, no, no. I've heard all that before, many times. Come on, let's pick up these things. Good night, Daddy. Good night, dear. Good night, Uncle Marty. Thanks for the candy. Good night, Janie. Good night, Daddy. Good night, son. Good night, Uncle Marty. Good night, old man. Come on. All right, I am. Well, that's that. Great pair of kids. Jim, is there anything I can do or... No, Marty, I guess not. I've got to make up my mind about something. Well, it can't be as serious as all that. Anyway, Jim, maybe talking about it will help. Yeah, why don't you think about it out loud? Well, maybe you're right. It might help at that. It begins... Well, I guess it begins one day just about a year ago. As far as I was concerned, it was just another day at the plant. At least it started out that way. <laughs> You've earned the job, Jim. And as I said, we think you've got all the makings of a good foreman. Oh, thank you, Mr. Vance. Naturally, you'll be given some special training for the job. You'll learn about the things you're supposed to do and also some things not to do. We'll give you all the help we can. But training can only do so much. Unless a guy's got it, down inside, the natural ability to handle and understand people, all the training in the world's not going to make him an executive. But if he's got the ability, he'll keep on climbing up the ladder. He'll keep on getting promotions no matter where he works. 
It can be in a factory, the army, or anywhere else. I think I see what you mean, all right. And this foreman's job is your first big step up the ladder. You see, Jim, the company always tries to pick its foreman with an eye to that ladder. Of course, sometimes we make mistakes and pick the wrong man. In other words, we picked you, Jim, because you've got the stuff. Maybe you'll have my job someday. Right, boss? You never can tell. In the meantime, Jim, here are some things that'll give you a lot of information about you and your new job. Covers a lot of subjects you'll be interested in knowing about. You see, Jim, you're now on salary. And there are a lot of advantages and responsibilities that go along with it. They are all here. It also tells about the open door policy. That means whenever you have anything on your mind that's bothering you, Jim, come in and talk it over. Excuse me, Charlie, but I ain't got a question on this new print here. All right, we were just leaving. Mark, you know Jim Baxter here, don't you? He's a foreman now. He's going to take over a crew very shortly. Yeah, I know, Baxter. Hope you do as good a job with your gang as John's been doing with his. Have to go somehow. Look at this blueprint. Somebody must be nuts. If I read this drawing right, then we're going to have to change our whole setup again. Well, congratulations, Jim. When do you oh, start? Thanks, Where are you going to work, Jimmy? You're going to be our boss? The company finally got smart, eh? Oh, How do you feel? Oh, oh thanks, guys. I... Look, I'll buy you all a beer on the way home. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Happy days are here again? Mommy, what's <laughs> the daddy dance? We're proud of you, Jim. The children and I are awful proud of what happened today. Yeah, I guess I'm a little bit proud myself. You see, honey, I... Well, as the boss said today, it's a big step up. I know it is. I've wanted it for a long time. You know I've wanted it and worked for it, too. I mean, like everybody else, I, I want to get ahead in the world, make something of myself for you and the kids. Well, no matter what happens, you'll never make that son of yours any prouder of you than he was today. <laughs> you should have heard him telling the Smith boy all about it. My father's a foreman, he said. <laughs> you should have been there. Yeah, he's a great kid. Tell him, Jim, were you surprised when they told you you'd been promoted? No. No, I knew I was going to get that job. Then when it actually came, I... Well, I... I guess I was a little bit surprised at that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to be plant superintendent someday. And yeah, maybe even higher than that. You want to bet? Mm -mm, not me. You know I never bet against the sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was happy. Not only that day, but for quite a while after that. I had the best job in the world, I figured. Sure, I wasn't with my old gang anymore, and I missed them. But that didn't bother me too much. Yes, I started out as a foreman in great shape. <laughs> After a few months, I was beginning to feel not as happy as, well, as happy as I thought I was going to be in my new job. First of all, there was this fellow, Al Slade, the kind of a person who, oh, I suppose there are some in every plant. The kind of a guy who does a lot of little things, annoying things, like constantly being careless about safety rules and stuff. Naturally, I had to call this to his attention. He didn't take too kindly to it. Once, in a sullen way, I thought I heard Slade make some crack about me being a big shot and the job having gone to my head. In addition to this, there was the attitude of Taylor, the assistant superintendent. Oh, I know he was a busy man with a big job to do, production to get out, but on a couple of occasions, he appeared to be just a little bit too abrupt, a little bit impatient. 
anyway, for real or imagined reasons, I began to feel I was right smack in the middle of things, as far as my foreman's job was concerned. And as the days passed, I thought I saw the reflection of this attitude in the entire gang. So, in an attempt to counteract this, I overlooked a couple of little incidents. Actually, though maybe I didn't realize it, it probably did more harm than good. It cost me some of the respect of my men. I didn't feel right about the way things were going. I knew something was wrong. And I was bothered inside. Plenty bothered. Big shot. Hey, let's go. thinking about it over at our plant, and some of the boys are convinced. Personally, I've been in favor of the foreman's union for a long time. I think we foremen should have it. As it is now, we get nothing but greed. Well, there sure are a lot of people interested in doing something for the poor, lowly foreman. <laughs> lowly foreman is right. The foreman's union would straighten out a lot of trouble that we have. The guy would know exactly where he stood then. last few weeks? You haven't been yourself. Oh, nothing. I'm all right. No, oh, no, you're not. I can tell. Something's wrong. Is it something that concerns me? Something I've done? Or don't you feel well? Or what is it, Jim? Oh, it's nothing. I'm all right, I tell you. Everything's okay, kid. Really, it is. What time? You got ten minutes here. Look, Jim, there's something wrong, and you can't fool me. I don't know what it is, but if there's anything I can do to help, well, that's what I'm for. Is it, is it something to do with your job? Well, yes, it is about the job, but not about production. I'm still all right there, at least. But otherwise, I guess I'm just a flop. Well, how do you mean? Well, I'm not sure exactly what I do mean. I guess maybe I just wasn't cut out to be a foreman. I can't take this business of being in the middle all the time. What do you mean, in the middle? It's just this. Sometimes it seems a foreman is neither fish nor fowl. He isn't one of the boys anymore, and he doesn't exactly seem to be the boss. Just a guy who gets the devil from both sides. Why, well, are you sure that... Jim, if there is a fault anywhere, whose fault would you say it was? I mean, what's the cause? It's the system, I guess. I know it isn't just me, Ruthie, because I heard a couple of guys in the bus on the way home last night. They were evidently feeling the same way. And what's more, they had an idea what to do about it. Really? What was it? A foreman union. As one guy said, the foreman have had to stand on the sidelines and watch the rank and file get a union and bargain for pay rates, grievance procedures, seniority rights, and all that. Well, all we get is grief. Yes, but a union for foreman? According to these fellows on the bus, the union's what we need. Well, I don't know anything about it, of course, but it just doesn't seem... Well, I won't say anything about it. It's up to you. Well, maybe it's the answer. I don't know. But I'm going to find out about it, because I have to find the answer somewhere, or else I'm going to quit being a foreman and go back and just be one of the boys. Oh, how you talk. Quit being a foreman. When you quit being a foreman, it'll be because you've been promoted. Mommy! Yes, dear? Daddy left? Mm-hmm. He just left. 
Oh, yes, I sleep too much. <laughs> Would you like something to eat? About two pancakes. Okay. But I was serious about looking to the foreman's union as an answer to my problem. I did a lot of thinking and a lot of investigating, too. I read some union pamphlets and talked to some other foremen. One night I got hold of some magazine articles on the subject and read till about two o'clock. I read about such things as grievance procedures, pay rates for foremen, and the seniority questions, as well as the need for clear-cut lines of responsibility, authority, and proper training. I tried to get the complete picture of the aims of the foreman's union. You remember, Ruth. I talked to you about it one night. We were in the kitchen. Look, Rose. According to some of the stuff I've been reading lately, the union would see to it that pay rates and things like that would be straightened around as far as foremen are concerned. Maybe they could get a more definite idea what our authority is. Maybe so. But there ought to be some way for men like you to, to get things like that straightened out without having to join a union. Anyway, if you did do that, it seems to me you'd be more in the middle than ever. With some outside union official telling you what to do, too. Didn't you say that some of those men don't even work in your plant? Uh-huh. I kind of feel that way about it, too. Only if we form a, like that guy in the magazine said, we are members of management, then that's that. We shouldn't have a union to bargain against ourselves. That's just logical. Yes, I can see that. But if we're just the forgotten men, just a bunch of stooges for real management, then that's something else again. So we come out and admit we're not part of management with any authority, and we join a union. Then what are you? That's just it. I don't know. Maybe we'd be nothing. Committee men would have more authority than we would, because we'd have to take orders from our union as well as from the company. They would be just a bunch of unionized errand boys. Uh, I wish I knew the answer. Why are you trying to find out all these things? Why not go see your boss? He was in your shoes once. He should know the answer. Tell him, tell him honestly that you have a problem. The door's always open, isn't it? Well... Tell him about the way you feel. It just stands to reason, Jim, that the company doesn't want its foreman to feel that way any more than you foremen do. Here, try that again. Jim, go to your boss. I bet he'll straighten you out. Straighten me out? Huh, <laughs> he'll probably throw me out. No, sir. That's just what that guy Taylor would like, for me to admit I didn't know my job or something. I know that guy. I have kind of a feeling he's writing me anyway. What do you mean by that? Oh, it's a lot of little things. His attitude. Nothing you can put your finger on exactly, but besides that, I can't go over the general foreman's head. Anyway, there's no use talking to him. He's probably in the same boat I am. But if I did go over his head, <laughs> then I'd really get it. Oh, well, I'll work it out one way or another. Here. That's still not dry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jim, I remember the nights you talked about the union business and the way you dried the dishes, too. Only I thought that you'd forgotten all about it since then. It's been so long since you mentioned it. Gee, I didn't know you were thinking about a union for foreman. You never said nothing to me about it. I didn't say anything to anyone about it. As you say, Ruthie, I did forget about it for a while, but that was before today. Well, what about today? For a change, everything seemed to be going along swell. Then Marshall, the general foreman, came up to me. Hey, Baxter, see you a minute? We're putting you on another job for a while. Report to Bill Thompson right after lunch today. He's general foreman over in Department 62. Another job? What's the idea? What's it all about? Orders from the front office. Got to get some stuff out. Well, what about... Who's going to take over here in my place? Oh, we have another fellow lined up. Anyway, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. What's up, Jim? 
I was just on my way to the canteen. The general foreman raising cane about something? I don't know exactly what, stuff. I'm being put in another job. I guess they're not satisfied with the way I've been running this one. Ah, oh, don't be near doing all right. Everybody knows your crew is still tops in production. I think. Gee, Jim, you don't think they're putting the skids on you, do you? Trying to ease you out? I thought they were trying something like that. Boy, I'd sound off plenty around here. What gave the idea they might be trying something like that? Ah, forget it, Jim. I'm just talking through my hat. Well, it's just that lately you've been... Ah, forget it, Jim. I'll see you later. But I didn't forget it. In fact, it seemed to me it added up to something. To me, this new job was apparently a demotion, and just about the last straw, as far as I was concerned. I was plenty discouraged, and more than a little bit sore, too. And as the day wore on, I began to get even more gripe. I couldn't get the idea off my mind that somehow or other, this trouble seemed to center around the assistant superintendent. Then, suddenly, I made up my mind. I made up my mind to take this foreman's job and throw it right into the teeth of the assistant superintendent, come what may. Yes, that's what I would do. I decided to take a bull by the horns and quit. But first, there were a few things that I had to say to the assistant superintendent. A few things that I wanted to get off my chest. Yep, that's what I wanted to do. By this time, I was in a fighting mood. First of all, I'm going to admit that you've won. So you don't have to pull any more fast moves to get me to chuck my foreman's job. I'm ready to quit it right now and go back to being just one of the boys. At least I knew where I stood then. Well, what in the name of... But before I do, there are a few things I'd like to say to you. I have a feeling that you personally have been gunning for me ever since I took over this foreman's job. Why, I don't know. And what's more, maybe I don't care. The only thing that means is that I could never get anywhere with you riding me all the time. But that's only part of the reason I'm quitting as a foreman. Whatever gave you the idea that I was riding you? I've got more important... Now, just a minute. Let me finish. The main reason I'm throwing in this sponge is because I think the foreman and the plant around here are getting a lousy deal. Maybe the other guys will take it, but I won't. Yeah, don't back us up. We don't know where we stand as far as authority is concerned. Ah, oh, the whole thing's a mess. Even the men realize that. What's the matter with you? Have you been drinking or something? You sound like you're off your head. Sure, that's just the attitude I'm talking about. If one of the union men has a grievance, you listen to him. But if a foreman gripes about anything, then you accuse him of being drunk. Well, when the boys get their foreman's union in here, we'll show you guys. The foreman have got some rights, too. Now, you listen to me. The reason I asked you if you were drunk is because you sound like you were completely off your nut. Now, I don't know what caused you to blow your top in the first place, but I'd like to straighten a couple of things out for you. As I said before, and I'll say it again, I've got far too much work to do to spend time riding a punk like you, even if I wanted to. Now, if the foreman's job is too much for you, you don't have to come in here shouting like a wild bull. If you can't do the job... Well, we'll talk the matter over quietly a little later. Is this a private brawl, or do you mind if I ask what it's all about? Oh, it's nothing, Charlie. We just maybe got a little bit excited, that's all. We'll straighten it out, all right. What's the trouble? Well, I guess I was sounding off too much at that, Mr. Vance. Just something personal. As a matter of fact, I dropped in to tell Mr. Taylor here that I want to give up my foreman's job and go back in the production line. Give up your foreman's job, eh? What's Marshall say about this? He doesn't know about it. I came directly here. I guess I wasn't smart at that. I guess I shouldn't have gone over the general foreman's head. Why do you want to give up your foreman's job, Baxter? What's the trouble? I thought you were doing so well. Didn't we put Baxter on that other job this morning as we decided? Yes, we did, but... That's one of the things that bothered me, Mr. Vance. Personally, I didn't feel I deserved it. Well, we did. We felt that you earned it. We don't promote anyone around here unless we think they've earned it or will do a better job. Better job? Earned it? Well, Baxter, you seem to have the knack of getting things done. With our new rush contracts, we had to increase production over in 62. So Marshall, the general foreman, recommended that you help us out over there. That's why we put you on that other job. All right. I see. I, I didn't know. Jim, Jim, you and that impulsive nature of yours, will you ever learn? <laughs> I did feel kind of silly at that, when they told me it was a sort of a promotion instead of a demotion. But then, well, I was in it, so I decided to see it through. What do you mean by that? 
The boss decided he had some more things to say. Still haven't answered all of my questions. What is this talk about not wanting to continue as a foreman? Well, it was just that I figured I wasn't doing very well as a foreman. And thought for the benefit of all concerned, I'd better step out. That's a surprising statement to make. Taylor, ask Marshall to come in here for a minute. Sure. Sit down, Baxter. When I asked what you men were shouting about, you both said it was something personal. Well, if it is, I won't try. I respect that. However, there was something else that interested me, and that was the remark you made to the effect that when the foremen get their union in here, things would be different. Yes, I did say that, but... As you know, there's been some discussion on the subject of the foreman's unions in some of the plants during the past few months, and it's something that should be considered carefully before any decision is made one way or the other. Don't you agree? I've done a lot of thinking about it myself. Do you know what the present company policy is in regards to the foreman's union question? Yes, I believe I do. Before you get away, I want to be sure you understand. Uh, here's Marshall. Marshall, what's the story? Taylor tells me there's been a little misunderstanding. I'm sorry to hear that because Baxter's record has been pretty good. Production schedule, costs, housekeeping, relations with the men. He was coming along in good shape. You see, Baxter, around here, decisions are governed by a man's record. That carries much more weight than any personal likes or dislikes. Not only that, but no foreman can be fired or demoted until his case has been completely reviewed by the general manager or his special representative appointed for that purpose. Boys, Jim and I were just discussing the foreman's union question and company policy. Sit down, I think you'll be interested. You see, Jim, this is what I meant when I told you some time ago that we operate on what we call the open door policy. Taylor and Marshall here will tell you that the open door policy means just what it says. As members of management, you foremen are not only invited, but urged to come in and sit down and talk with any other member of management and discuss your personal problems or make suggestions on any part of our business. This way, we cut out the possibility of any misunderstanding and the trouble that always follows misunderstanding. The trouble is, however, nobody, at least nobody I know, as the faculty of complete understanding of every situation. Well, that's right. Because most of us are too busy to take time and find out all the facts. That is, all the facts behind every situation. Well, sure. Take, for example, a political question and that stuff. Usually, as far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to let some magazine writer or newspaper guy or radio commentator figure it out for me. Then, if his opinion makes sense, why, I usually string along with him. Well, I think we're all guilty of that, Monty. However, it seems to me, when we come up against questions directly affecting our personal lives, that is, our homes, our families, and our jobs, then I think we should do our own thinking and deciding. We just can't afford to let outsiders do it for us. We have to take time to get the facts, make up our own minds. That's true. Like the question of a foreman's union. And that's just about what Van said. We've got to get the facts. All of them. But here's the point I want to make. Any decisions that are as close to us as that are decisions that should be made by those of us who are directly involved. I mean, as far as the foreman's union is concerned. Now, that's something the foremen have got to decide for themselves. And no company board of directors, outside agency, or government panel can take that right away from them. Do you agree with that, Marshal? I most certainly do. But, in all fairness, before any decision is made, every foreman has got to know the facts on both sides of the question. And when he has the facts, all of them, he should make up his mind and stand by his gun. So, Baxter, here are the facts as far as the company is concerned. First, in this company, for all of us here, there's a distinct line drawn between us and those who have no supervisory duties. Naturally, a foreman, by the very nature of his duties, is a member of management, and thus operates on the management side of the line. Then you really feel a foreman is head of his department? Certainly. He's personally responsible for its efficiency as well as its discipline. As a manager, he's supposed to take the necessary and proper steps to maintain both. Well, that makes good sense. A 
That's the only way it can be. The foreman is in business. He's assigned to a certain amount of floor space on which to conduct his business. He's given the equipment, tools, materials, and men to produce a certain product, and he's responsible for the operation. <laughs> yeah, but uh, regardless of how carefully all the plans have been made, they don't always provide for conditions and emergencies that often come up. What I mean is, regardless of the best engineering prints, specifications don't always contain all the information necessary to make the products. In addition to that, regardless of the best tool designing, tools don't always work perfectly the first time or keep on working as they should. And regardless of the best organized materials control, the stuff doesn't always come around on schedule. You're right there. I've had all those things happen to me at some time or other during the last year. Haven't we all? And another thing, regardless of the most carefully selected workmen, people are all different from one another. Each workman takes instructions differently, responds differently, so that no foreman can handle his men by any mechanical formula or ready-made set of plans. Do you agree with that? If you mean that no two people are alike... That's just what I mean. Personalities always have to be taken into consideration. Yet, in spite of all these variables, a good shop foreman does manage to produce. And it's his ability to manage, under the circumstances, that we consider the biggest single factor in his personal success. So if that isn't management in the truest sense of the word, I don't know what is. Our foreman operate like a boss, or the owner of a small business, as far as handling the people is concerned. Yes, I can see where we foremen can certainly be considered managers from the production standpoint. But, well, I for one was never too clear as far as, well, as far as the actual responsibilities in handling the men. What I'm getting at is, a guy's got to maintain the respect of his men, and yet... That's what I meant when I was talking about personalities. I know. That's one of my own problems. I'm too darned impatient. Yes, that's a big fault of yours, Mark. But to get back to your question, Jim, of course, the foreman has got to have the respect of his men. And along with ability to get out production, he must be a leader, be able to lead people. On top of that, he must have the ability to act as a company's first line representative in collective bargaining matters. As you know, in this company, the foreman is definitely established as the first step in any grievance procedure. That's why when the union contract came up for renewal, the foremen were asked to give their opinions and recommendations on what changes should be made to facilitate their contacts with the men. How about when a foreman has a problem of his own? And every now and then we do, you know. As I see it, any foreman should be able to stand on his own two feet, talk frankly with his immediate boss and any other member of the management group. If he can't do that, if he feels he needs some spokesman to do it for him, <laughs> then as far as I'm concerned, he's not management material. That's exactly why we have the open door policy. Any foreman who can't represent himself with his bosses isn't a foreman any more than he's a manager if he can't handle his responsibilities with the people under him. So a foreman just has to decide whether he wants to be dealt with as an individual man or merely as an unidentified member of a group. We believe that union representation of any management group will definitely limit the opportunities of the individuals in that group. The foreman just wouldn't be able to function as members of management. Then here's another one. You say a foreman's a manager. But when you come right down to it, actually he has no freedom. So don many rules and stuff. <laughs> I know what you mean. You're not alone there. You see, there are a lot of different management jobs. And they all have their limitations. That's true whether you're a foreman, a chief engineer, sales manager, or manager of some other department. Naturally, there has to be teamwork between the departments, and they all have to tie in with the business as a whole. Why, even the general manager isn't always free to do as he thinks best. In the final analysis, he and all of us have to do what the customer wants. Boy, you'll have to admit they laid it on the line, didn't they? Yeah, they were honest. They didn't hold anything back. Well, at least you got your answer. Yeah, they left no doubt about that point. A foreman is certainly a manager in our plan. Did the brass hats have anything else to say? Oh, yes. We talked for quite a while after that. I bet you boys are hungry. Come on, let's go into the kitchen and see what we can find to eat. Hey, that's not a bad idea. I'm all for it. <coughs> uh, what else did the big shots have to say, Jim? We spent quite a lot of time talking about the foreman's responsibilities. Then the subject changed to the company's responsibilities to the foreman. This I gotta hear. <laughs> Thank you.
How about some peanut butter, Ruth? Sure. Got plenty. Vance said the idea was to uncover all the facts. Well, I think that is important, especially right now, with Jim here wanting to give up his foreman's job. Okay. The company's policy is based on the idea that if we all really believe and want each foreman to believe that his opportunities for personal success lie in his own individual merit and achievement rather than in the hands of some organized group, then the company must do its part. You mean then that a man should be promoted on a basis of merit and achievement rather than on seniority? That's the only fair way, isn't it? Now take Baxter here. We promoted him to that job on 62 because of his ability. And after all, it's the company's responsibility to promote a man or make any other changes just from the standpoint of the welfare of the company. At least that's the practical way. Of course. Naturally, length of service is always considered, given a certain amount of weight as far as promotions are concerned. But it's not the sole reason for a step up. Oh, sure, I know that. I agree that uh, ability and potential, the way a guy does his work, should count first. That's the way to encourage the better man for the better job. Only I just wanted to register with Jim here that length of service, loyalty, if you want to call it that, is also considered. You bet it is. Uh, how about training foreman? Every new foreman should be given complete and proper training in all phases of his job. And he should be fully advised of the extent of his responsibilities and given the proper amount of authority to carry them out. In other words, it's his responsibility and authority to get a fair day's work from each person under his supervision. And frankly, that's one of the things that bothered me more than anything else. I didn't know just how far I could go. That perhaps was my fault for not giving you the complete picture as far as your definite authority goes. But I'll certainly take care of that. And it's also the company policy, isn't it, Charlie? To give every foreman all possible backing in his authority. Yes, that's true. And the company also feels that part of its responsibility is to be sure that the foreman understands its objectives, policy, and procedures. And that goes beyond just training, because training and telling isn't enough. As a definite member of the management staff, the foreman, through man-to-man -man contacts, like we're having right here, has got to know the whys and wherefores. By that same token, whenever possible, the foremen are consulted before major changes are made in any policy affecting their work. And, Marshal, we were wrong in not letting Baxter know why he was put on that other job. Might have saved a lot of grief. That's true. Yeah, but maybe in this case it was a good thing. It's given us a chance to straighten out a lot of questions. Here's a point I'd like to make, too. In dealing with any members of the management organization, the company must see to it that as a man he receives a fair deal, as an individual, that is, and that his contribution to the objective as a whole is recognized. Well, that's our company policy. We believe it's our responsibility to protect the foreman's freedom of opportunity to get ahead on his own. Actually, we guarantee free enterprise for the individual. Free enterprise? It means that in this company, ambition, individual effort, and hard work will not be overshadowed by any system of seniority or by the personal likes or dislikes of any individual in higher management. Do you have any questions, Jim? What did you say then, Jim, when the boss asked you if you had any questions? Well, I said, yeah, I did have some questions. I said I was willing to admit that all he said, all those points, were good. In fact, it sounded like a foreman's heaven. Well? Ideals and intentions are one thing, but actually putting them into practice is something else. You said that to the boss? Sure. And I said even more. I said what I wanted to know was, does the company actually mean those things? Wow, I bet that stopped them. Well, you didn't have to sound like a smart aleck, did you? I mean... Well, I don't think I did. At least I didn't mean to. I just pointed out that in my experience, I discovered that some companies were pretty darn selfish when it came to giving anything away or doing something for anybody. He's right there, Ruthie. I never knew a company yet that would do nothing for nobody unless there was a selfish motive back of it. That's the word they used when they answered me. You mean selfish? That was the word? Yeah, practically. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, Jim. That's exactly what I meant by standing on your own two feet and asking for the answer to anything that's on your mind or not clearly understood. You said that your experience had shown you that some companies are selfish. 
Well, it should have shown you that all companies are selfish. The only reason anybody goes into business is to make a profit. But that doesn't mean that they're miserly or niggardly, selfish to the point of having no regard for the rights of others. You're in the business of being a foreman. Naturally, you want to sell your services and talents for as much money and as many benefits as you can get. And that's as it should be. Yeah, I guess that's right at that. Certainly it's right. And you hope to advance on up the ladder and earn still more money and enjoy more and more benefits. Your prime interest is in yourself and your family. There's nothing wrong with that kind of selfishness, is there? Not for my dough, there isn't. Right. And the company, too, is out for number one. And that means that it will fight against anything that will injure the company. And it will promote everything that will improve it. Now, we think, for instance, that the representation of foreman by a third party will not benefit us from the standpoint of the managing job. Instead, such representation will actually nullify the foreman's value as a manager. Now, on the other hand, anything we do to improve the efficiency of the foreman, to raise their standards, make them better in any way, is serving the best interests of the company. The better foreman we have, the better company we have. The better company, the better products. And naturally, more sales. And that means better jobs and more security for all of us on the company payroll. And there isn't one of those points that the boss mentioned, the ones you referred to as a foreman's heaven, Jim, that doesn't serve the selfish interests of the company. That's because they will help to make you and me and every other foreman a better manager. As an example, take the benefits you get through the sick leaves and retirement plans. Our policy on foreman's compensation, the additional insurance. All these things benefit everyone because they help to make the foreman a better and happier man. That's right. And the company wants the best men in the business. And that's what the policy is designed to give us, except that every now and then, some of us let ourselves get all worked up over something without getting all the facts. That's right. I, I did come in here to quit. Then what did happen? I'll bet I know. I can just see that guy Taylor saying it, too. Right, Baxter? You came in here to quit, so we accept your resignation with pleasure. Am I right, Jim? No, you're not. You see what I mean? Huh? As a matter of fact, Taylor isn't a bad guy at all when you get to know him. You mean they didn't let you quit? You're still a foreman? No, right now I'm not a foreman. Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. For a minute there, they had me fooled. I guess all brass hats and big shots are alike. I know what happened. I'll bet they gave you the air the minute you began thinking twice about the foreman's union. No, the union had nothing to do with it. They made that clear. Besides, I didn't say they gave me the air. But you said you weren't a foreman anymore. I said I wasn't a foreman right now. And that's true. Right now, I'm not anything. But whatever I am tomorrow morning is up to me. Well, of course. Well, now that you have all the facts, you mean, now that I have all the facts, it should be easy to decide? Yes, that's what I was going to say. I thought so, too. But Mr. Vass told me not to make up my mind until I'd taken plenty of time to think it over. He didn't try to sell me one way or another. They tried to give me a complete picture of all the advantages of being a foreman, plus all the disadvantages, all the grief and headaches that go along with the responsibilities of management. But they just didn't say the whole thing was your fault? No. They admitted a foreman's job is no bed of roses. I told you that. They also said the job got tougher and tougher as the responsibilities increased. In other words, the higher a guy goes up the ladder, the more grief he's exposed to. Yeah, but the additional dough helps ease the pain. You'd be surprised how much grief I could stand if it would show up in my paycheck. <laughs> yes, Monty. Money does mean a lot, especially if you have plans. Plans for your home and your children and, oh, a lot of things. Yeah, that's what I mean, Ruthie. It all takes money. But it takes more than just money to bring happiness. There's, there's such a thing as, as enjoying your work, of, of being happy in the job you do, a feeling that, that you're accomplishing something for yourself, and for us, too. Nothing can take the place of the satisfaction you get from doing a job well. And I mean a job that, that makes you want to work. And which will lead to something in the future and... 
I know so many things. That's exactly the way I feel about it, honey. And, well, anyway, I've already made up my mind. I know now exactly what I'm going to do. And I can't miss. Do you want to bet? Mm-mm, not me. You know I never bet against a sure thing.